Today we're going to use WordPress, the best and most popular way in the entire world to create a website. It's used by the best companies and artists for their own websites, and it's really easy. We're going to be doing it all step by step with no steps skipped. Hi, I'm Tyler Moore, and to make a website, it's just three simple steps. First, we have to set up your website, and then we're going to organize your website, and then we're going to design your website. The first thing that we need to do is we need to set up our website. So we need to do the intro, which we've already done. We need to do the overview, which we're doing now, and then we need to set up your website name and hosting. Super easy to explain. Your website name is yourwebsite.com and hosting is where you store all of your website files. After that, we're going to install WordPress. WordPress is the most popular and best platform in the entire world and it's super simple to install. After that, we're going to log into your website. Super easy. And then we're going to be done with the setup phase. The next phase is the organize phase. So we're just going to organize a few things so that we can begin designing basically. We're going to delete something called plugins, which is basically like apps or programs on your website that they include automatically that we don't need. Then we're going to delete the sample pages and posts. Then we're going to back up your website so you never need to worry about messing up. And then we're going to do your site title and taglines. And this basically describes your website to the search engines so you can get ranked better. And then we'll be done with organizing your website. And finally, we'll begin to design your website. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose your designs and there are so many different designs to choose from and this is just going to be your starting point and you can mix and match different designs together to create basically any design that you want. Then we're going to get into the theme style. The theme style is basically all of the default colors and the default fonts you want throughout your entire website and after that we're going to edit your home page and here I'm going to show you a whole bunch of tricks, basically like how to change your text, how to change your buttons, your backgrounds, your colors, background overlays, inserting new images, deleting sections, moving sections, deleting columns, the different spacing around everything, adding new sections, rearranging new sections, creating multiple columns, and updating your website. Once we do that, I'm going to show you how to make your website mobile friendly. It's already 99% mobile friendly, so it's going to work on your phones and tablets and everything like that. And then we're going to get into the about page where I'm going to show you how to save a lot of time by adding blocks. Instead of having to recreate and build your website from scratch, you can use these different blocks that are going to save you so much time. And then we're going to get into the services page. Obviously, this can be any page. You don't need to have an about or services page. You can delete any pages or change it however you want. But in this section, I'm going to show you how to import an entire page from a different template. And this is super cool because you can mix and match so many different templates together to make your own. And then we're going to learn about the contact page, how to edit it, and then how to edit the form on the contact page because you can have a contact form so that your visitors can get in touch with you super easy. All they have to do is fill out this form and that form will email you to your email address and you can start having a conversation with them in that way. After that, I'm going to show you how to put in a brand new page so you can put in any page that you want on your website. I'm going to show you how to put in a projects page, but obviously you can put in any page that you want. And then I'm going to show you how to create your own logo or insert a logo that you already have. And Finally, we're going to get into the header and the footer, which is just the top of your website and the bottom of your website, basically where your logo is and your menu links are. And I'm going to show you how to add in a cool button at the top of your website. And I'll also show you how to edit your footer. And then that's it. Congratulations. We're all done. That could have cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, but you're doing it all yourself and you're learning something cool. And we're going to be doing it all step by step with no steps skipped. So we're done with the overview. Now let's learn about the only part that costs money, getting your website name and hosting. Also in the description below, I have a website checklist where you can keep track of all of your progress. And it also links to each part of the video. I also respond to each and every comment, whether it's just a thank you or if you get stuck with something, I'm always here to help. All right, so let's begin. So what is your website name and hosting? Your website name and hosting are the only thing that costs money and it's super easy to understand. Your website name is basically yourwebsite.com or yourbusiness.com and Google's website name is google.com and Apple's website name is apple.com. So that's your website name. You need something to type in order for someone to go to your website. Hosting is a little bit different. Hosting is a place that stores all of the information. So if you had a website name and no hosting, then we'd be able to type in your website name right here, but the website would come up blank because there's no place to store all of your text, images, and files. But if we had a website name and hosting, then we would see all of our text and images and files and everything like that. So it's super important to have hosting because without it, your website would come up blank. So this right here is basically what hosting is. It's a computer that's on 24 seven that holds all of your images and all of your text. And then those images can be displayed on your website and the text can be displayed 
on your website. Let's see a really quick example. Let's say someone types in the website google.com. So right here they type in google.com. That's where they want to go. Then that request gets sent to this hosting computer right here. And then this hosting computer that's storing all of the text and images sends all of that information back to their computer. And we can see that website get transferred back. So it travels from this computer all the way back to their computer right here. And then we can see the Google website. So your website name cost about $15 per year and that's before discounts. I'll show you how to get a discount in just a second and hosting cost about $10 per month again before discounts. But in total with all of the discounts and everything else it cost about $30 for the entire year. And I think that's a really good deal to have your website spread across the entire world operating 24-7 365. And again that's the only thing that you need to pay for. There are no extra cost for your website. All right, so let's get your website name and hosting. And luckily we can do that at the same place. All we have to do is open up our browser and go to hostgator.com. That's H-O-S-T-G-A-T-O-R.com and press enter. I do get a commission for recommending HostGator, so thank you so much. And I've been recommending them on YouTube for 11 years now. I can't believe it's been that long. I really like them because they have super great prices and they have 24-7, 365 live chat, phone, and email support. But there are thousands and thousands of hosting companies and obviously I haven't tried all of them. So if your hosting company is different, this tutorial might be a little bit different, but you should be able to follow along just fine. We can see these different buttons up here, but what you want to do is hover over hosting. And then we see these three right here. And you'd think that you would use WordPress hosting, but it just costs more and we can always upgrade later. So what we're going to do is install WordPress on the shared hosting. So just click on shared hosting. If we scroll down, we can see these three different plans and we can see it says 275 for this hatchling plan. But there's a trick if you go up here and you type unlock U N L O C K and press enter. We can see that the biggest discount is unlocked. And if we scroll down, we can see that the prices have changed. And now we're getting a much bigger discount. So there's three different plans, the hatchling plan, the baby plan, and the business plan. The business plan is just way too much. We don't need all of these things and we can always upgrade later. So it really is between the hatchling plan and the baby plan. The difference between the hatchling plan and the baby plan is that the baby plan offers unlimited websites. So you can have like yourwebsite.com, yourfriendswebsite.net, your mom's website.org. You can have as many websites as you want on this single baby plan. But with the hatching plan, you can only have one website. But because most people are only starting off with one website anyways, I recommend getting the hatching plan and then you can always upgrade later. Unless you know for sure you already have two websites that you want to make, then you'd use a baby plan. But really the hatching plan is everything that most people need. So we're just going to scroll down and click on buy now. Now it's going to ask us, are we registering a new domain or do we already own a domain? You would click I already own this domain if you got your domain name from somewhere like godaddy.com and you already own it. But today I'm registering a new domain, so I'm just going to click on register a new domain and I'm going to put in the domain name right here. And now it's going to ask us, do we want it to be ourbusinessname.com or .online or .site or .store? The most common is .com, so I would stick with that if I could. But sometimes your domain name isn't available because someone else already registered it. And in that case, you would either think of a new domain name or you would change the ending right here. If you're a nonprofit, maybe you'd want a .org, but we're just going to stick with the .com. Next, if we scroll down, it's going to ask us, do we want the .com and the .club and the .site and the .net? In my opinion, you don't need all of these. They obviously just want to make more money, but I don't think someone's going to like steal your business or anything like that. So I think just get one domain name as your primary domain, and then we can scroll down and we can look at domain privacy protection. So when you register a new domain, your information like your email and your phone number gets registered to this domain name. Then anyone online can look it up and sometimes you might get a few spam calls or spam emails that are a little bit annoying. And if you definitely didn't want that to happen, then you would enable domain privacy protection. And what this does is it hides all of your information, like your email and your phone number. 
but in the spirit of saving the most amount of money and just knowing that we may get a couple of spam calls and spam emails, I'm gonna uncheck this and I'm gonna save $15 a year. Next, we can scroll down and we're gonna choose a hosting plan. We already chose the hatching plan, so we're just gonna leave that. And next, the billing cycle. This is where a little bit of strategy comes into play because if we go with a one month plan, then our discount is only applied for that one single month. So if we go with the one month plan, even though we're paying the least amount upfront, that discount only gets applied for that one month. So we're actually going to be paying the most amount in the long run. If we go with a 36 month plan, we're going to be paying the most amount up front, but saving the most amount in the long run. I think the perfect balance is the 12 month plan where you're not paying much up front and you're saving a lot in the long run. And it's actually the cheapest amount per month of all the plans. Next, we can scroll down and we can enter in our email address, confirm our email address, enter in our password, then put in a security pin, scroll down and we can enter in our billing information like our first name, last name, phone number, address, country, city, and state. I'm in California. Next, we can scroll back up and enter in our payment type. We can pay by credit card or PayPal. And don't worry, this is not my real credit card number. Then we can scroll down and it's going to ask us, do we want to add additional services? So for our SSL certificate, that's when you get this little lock up here and we would think that we would need it, but actually this is advanced SSL. Your website already comes with SSL. So we don't need this right here. Next is securing your website. The beautiful thing about WordPress is we can download something called a plugin that will add extra security to our website so we don't need this and we're saving $36 a year. For professional email, your website already comes with basic email, but this is something that I would consider maybe in the future, especially if you already use Google for your other email addresses. But we can always get this later, so we don't need to worry about it right now. And this is site backup, so it'll back up your website. And even though this is a great idea, again, we can download something called a plugin for free that will back up our website for us and we'll save $24 a year. Next is SEO tools. And while that's a great idea, again, there's a plugin that's free that you can install on your website that will save you $35 a year. So we don't need any of these additional services. So make sure they're all blank. Then make sure our coupon code is unlocked. That's the highest coupon code that there is. And now we can scroll down and we can review our order 24-7, 365 live chat, email support, instant account activation, money back guarantee for 45 days. We are registering our domain name and we have the 12 month plan or whatever plan you chose. And it says the amount is about $30. So anywhere from $30 to $40, sometimes this fluctuates a little bit, but anywhere in between there is a great great deal to have your website online and spread across the entire world. Next, we can scroll down and check that we have read the terms of service and then click check out now. All right, congratulations. You've done the hardest part, which is just decide that you actually want a website. Everything else is pretty easy after that. The next thing that we're going to do is install WordPress. So just find any button that says install WordPress and go ahead and click on it. Then we're going to see this right here and it used to be super hard but now all you have to do is click on install now and now it's going to ask us for some information leave this as it is your domain name will probably already be selected but if it's not you can just select it from here next we're going to make sure that this is blank right here we don't want to put anything right here because if we do it's going to install it on your website.com forward slash something instead of just your website.com we want to leave this as default whatever it is and then we want to scroll down to our site settings and for our site name that usually is just your business name or if you don't have a business it's just your name Next is your site description, and this is something that describes your site. So for example, if you made logos and you're from Los Angeles, maybe you'd put Los Angeles logo designer. Or if you're the best math tutor in the world, maybe you'd put best math tutor in the world. I'm just gonna put learn how to make a website. And for your admin username, I like to put my name. And for your password, I like to change this password to something that I can remember and just put it in right here. Then for your admin email, this is important. So we wanna change it to our main email. So I'm just gonna put in my Gmail. And that's because if you have to recover your password or something, it'll send it here. 
Next, we're going to scroll down and for select language, I would recommend keeping it as English, even if you speak another language. And that's because you'll be able to follow this tutorial much easier if you keep it on English, then later you can change it. We don't need to worry about this. We can always do that later. We're going to scroll down and we're going to skip select themes. I'm going to show you how to do that later. And if you want, you can put in your email right here. It's not necessary, but it will send some additional details to your email address. Then all we have to do is click install and if we scroll up we can see it installing so it's doing all of this magic behind the scenes setting up databases and all of that stuff for you that used to be hard but now is super super simple so all we have to do is wait a couple of minutes and WordPress will be installed so it says congratulations the software was installed successfully but has it really if we go to our website right here and click on it, we can see that the website can't be reached. And that's because it takes your website anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes to spread across the entire world and let everyone know that it exists. So we're gonna have to wait 10 to 20 minutes. Sometimes it's very rare, it can take an hour, and it's super, super rare for it to take up to 24 hours, but it has happened. So I'm just gonna take a little break right now. I'm gonna close this up here. And I'm going to go for a walk and I'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right, so I'm back. It's been about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and check out our website. And we can see that our website works. Some developers would charge you $500 just to get to here, which is ridiculous. This is so easy. So now that we have our website, we can go ahead and close this right here. And right now we're viewing the website as a visitor would view it. In order to make changes to your website, we have to log in. So we can go up here and go to yourwebsite.com forward slash WP dash admin and then press enter. And now we can enter in that username and password that we just made. So I'm just gonna put in my name as the username and the password that I made right here. Then just press login. And now we're logged in to your website. And this is where you can make changes. This is called the dashboard. To get back to the front end of your website as your users would see it, you would just click on your business name up here and that will transport you back to the front end of your website. In order to get back to the back end or the dashboard of your website, sometimes you have to click on refresh right here and this bar will show up right here. This means that you're logged in. Your users can't see it, only you can see it because you're logged in. And to get to the dashboard again, all you have to do is click on your website name again. So that's how you get to the front end and the back end of your website. The next thing that you might notice is if we scroll down here, we have all of these things jumping out, trying to grab our attention. And what the hosting companies do is they load you up with a whole bunch of plugins already pre-installed on your website. It's like when you get a phone and you have all of these apps that you didn't download or you get a computer and you have all these programs already installed that you don't really need. The hosting companies do the same thing. They have all of these plugins that you don't really need that are just cluttering up your website. But plugins are super important. And what they are is they're little apps or little programs that you can install on your website for free that help you do things. For example, by default, WordPress doesn't have a contact form. So we can download a plugin and now your website can have a contact form. Or by default, your website can't make backups. So we can download a free plugin and now your website can make backups. But most of these plugins we don't need. So the first thing that we're going to do is delete all of these plugins that we don't need. So go over to plugins right here. Then we can scroll down and we can see all of the plugins installed. And if we scroll back up, what we can do is we can check this box. It'll select all of them. Go up here. First, we're going to deactivate them and then click apply. And then go here again and go to the drop down and press delete and then apply and that's going to delete all of the plugins then we can press ok and now all of our plugins are deleted so if we go back to the dashboard we can see that this looks much better this looks much more clean but in order to clean our website perfectly we also need to delete the pages and the posts so let's go to the front end of our website by clicking on our name and we can see here we have a sample page right here we can just click on it and we see the sample page we didn't make the sample page and and so we want to delete this sample page. Let's click on this right here to go to our main website. And we can also see this hello world right here. 
This is like a blog post and we didn't make it, so we are going to delete it. So in order to delete our page in our post, let's go to the back end of the website and click on pages. We can see these two pages right here. We can select both of them. We can go here, move them to the trash and apply, and then click on the trash, select this so it selects both of them, go to delete permanently and apply. Now we have zero pages. Let's go to post right here. We can hover over it and click on trash. And then we can go to the trash just because I want everything super clean, hover over it and press delete permanently. Now, if we go to our website, we can see that our website is blank. It doesn't look great yet, but it will look great really soon. The one thing that I really like doing once I have a clean website is to make a backup. Then I'll always know I can go back to a clean, fresh start, and it makes me feel like I can be free and make any sort of wild changes that I want, and I won't break anything because I can always go back. So to do that, we're gonna download a plugin. So just hover over your website name, click on it to go to the dashboard, click on plugins, then we're gonna add a new plugin right here. And then we're gonna search for a plugin right here. And the plugin has a super weird name, but trust me, it's the best backup plugin. It's called All-in-One WP Migration. And we can see that it has 4 million active installations, almost 7,000 reviews with four and a half out of five stars. So all we have to do is click on install now. That will install it to our website. And then we have to activate it. So just click on activate and that will activate it on our website. Now, if we look over here, we have this new all-in-one WP migration menu item and we can just click on it and we can say export to and we wanna export this to a file. Once we do that, it's gonna archive it and it's gonna tell us to download it. So now we can just download this to our computer and now it's downloaded. I'm just gonna drag this to my desktop and just exit out of here. That's all you need to do. Then press close. And now we always have that backup. So we can make any changes we want right now. And let's say we did something crazy and messed up the website somehow. We would just click on import and we would drag this file from your desktop to right here and it will import this clean backup. I'm gonna stop the import right now because I don't need to do it, but that's how you would import your backup onto your website. So these are like checkpoints in a game to ensure that you never lose progress on your website. All right, so let's go back to our dashboard right here. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to change your site title and tagline in WordPress. So all we have to do is click up here and we can see it if we hover over our website name we can see that it says create a website that's our title and learn how to make a website that's our tagline this is super important because this is what shows up in the search engines and it gets people to click on your website so you want to have a good site title that's usually your business name and a tagline that really describes your business well. All right, so to change it, we wanna go into the back end by just clicking on your business name and then going to settings and general. Once we're here, we can change that site title right here and we can change this tagline right here. We don't wanna change any of this right here because that will break your website, but we do wanna make sure that this says your email and we can scroll down and we can press save changes. And that's how you change your site title and tagline. The next thing that we're gonna do is install your theme. The theme is the design of your website. Let's look at it. We can go to the front end of your website and we can see that this is the current theme. And right now this theme is pretty crappy. We can't do anything on this theme that we want. It has a certain design that probably doesn't speak to you and it's just not that great. Before, there used to be themes for every different type of business. So if you're a plumber, you get a plumber theme. If you're a designer, you get a designer theme. If you're a marketer, you get a marketer theme. But that's the old way of doing it. The new way is you have one theme that can turn into any type of website. So literally everything can be changed within this theme. So that's what we're going to be installing this one theme that can be anything. It can look like any type of website you see on the internet. So to change our theme, all we have to do is go back into the dashboard by clicking on our website name and then going to appearance and themes. So right now this theme is installed right here. We're going to be adding a new one 
by clicking on add new and we're going to be installing this theme right here but let's go ahead and search for it we can just search for astra a s t r a and press enter and we can see this astra theme right here we can go to details and preview and we can see that it's rated 5,000 times five out of five stars super great this is a preview of what the theme will look like but because it's blank it doesn't have anything on it and it looks terrible we're going to make it look super great really soon so just click install and then we can click on activate now our theme is activated we can go ahead and look at it on our website it still looks terrible but this is the blank website or the skeleton that will allow us to do anything the next thing that we're going to do is install a plugin that will save you so many hours and make your website really professional it's going to allow you to import almost any design into your website as a starting point that you can then edit to do that all you have to do is hover over your website name and click on it and then scroll down and click on plugins. Once you do that, you can click on add new. And this is how you could add any plugin to your website. Then over here, we can search for a plugin called Starter Templates, S-T-A-R-T-E-R-T-E-M-P-L-A-T-E-S. -T -E -E then we can see the Starter Templates. It's been installed a million times and has 3,400 five-star reviews. And we can click on install now. Once we do that, we can click on activate. And now when we go over to appearance and starter templates, we can see this new item right here and we can click on it. Once we do that, we can scroll down and click build your website now. Then it's going to ask us to select a page builder. And by far, Elementor is the best page builder. So we're going to select that one. And now we can see all of the templates that we have access to. Some of these templates are paid, but a lot of them are free. You can tell if they're paid by if they say premium on them right here, but I think the free ones are just amazing. Once we find one that we like, we can go ahead and click on it, and then we can open it up right here, and we can preview all of the different pages if we want to see what we're getting. But you should know that you can mix and match different templates. So if you like one page from one of them and another page from another one, I'm gonna show you how to do that too. If this is not the one that we want, we can open this back up and exit out of here and we can continue our search. We can also go up here and search for a template. I made one called Earth just for this tutorial. I designed this template myself. I think it's beautiful. I submitted it so that they can include it for free. You can choose something different, but just know that this tutorial might be slightly different, but you should be able to follow along just fine. So we can click on it and we can check out all of the pages. So we can check out the home page right here, scroll back up and check out the about page and check that out. Then we can check out the services page, make sure that we really like it. And we can check out the contact page where people can get in contact with you. They can email you, they can call you. But of course you can change all of these pages however you want. So let's go back to our home page and open this back up and I'm going to show you how to create and put in your logo later. So we can just press skip and continue. Here you can change the colors to any colors that you want and it'll change across the entire template. I'm also going to show you how to do this later. So you can just keep it default or choose whatever you want. We can also change the font to anything that we want, but I'm just going to keep it as the default. And again, we can change that later. Then we can press continue. We can scroll down and we can press submit and build my website. Installing the template can take anywhere from 20 seconds to two minutes. If you ever want to change or reinstall your template, you can just follow the steps and do it again. But just know that it will rewrite your entire website. Right now it's installing all of the designs, all of the extra plugins you'll need, like a contact form, adjusting all of the colors and making it mobile friendly. So bam, now it's done. You have saved so many hours of time. We can go ahead and click view your website. So instead of having to create every web page yourself, this gives you an amazing starting point and you can just change whatever you want. The next thing that we're gonna do is change your theme style. You'd wanna do this so that your website has consistent fonts and colors. We did this in the previous section, but it's important to know how to access this for the future. It's super easy. All we have to do is click on customize up here and then click on global right here. And then we can click on typography, which is the same thing as your fonts. And if we scroll down a little bit, we have the heading font, which is like the big text up here and right here. And we also have the body font, which is all of this text here, here, and even up here. 
So if we wanted to change the heading font, we could just click on it. And there are hundreds and hundreds of fonts to choose from, so you can just change it and we can see that it has changed. We could change it again and we can see that it will change again. And we can see that any heading will change right here. I'm going to go back to Jost because that's what I like. And for the body font, it's pretty much the same thing. You just click on it and we can change it here and we can see that it will change. And it also changes up here. But I'm going to go back to Roboto because I think that one's awesome. And for your colors, all you have to do is go back and go to colors. And we can change all of the different colors right here. These are just the general colors on your entire website. So we can like go here and change these different colors. And you just have to play around with these colors to see where it changes. If you want to reset the colors back to how they originally were, you can just press reset right here. You can also go on each page and change the colors however you want. So if you wanted this button to be different than the general colors on the entire website, you can change this page individually. Once you have the colors you want, we're going to click on publish. Then we're going to click on the X to exit out of here. So that's how you change all of your colors and all of your fonts for the entire website. The next thing that we're going to do is probably the part that you've been waiting for, the fun part, and that's editing the pages to be exactly how you want. To edit your website, all you have to do is click on Edit with Elementor. Elementor is a visual page builder that's going to make editing your website super easy. You can change anything on your website by just clicking on whatever you want. And then on the left side, you can just start typing in your own content. So we can do that again by clicking on anything that we want and then type in something different. You'll get different options on the left side depending on what you click on the right side. So if we click this button, it's going to give us different options right here. And here we can change what the button says and where the button links to. So we can just start typing in contact and it'll automatically find our contact page and we can just click on it. And now this button will link us to the contact page. So when someone clicks on it, they will get sent directly to your contact page. If we want to change the background image, it's super easy. All we have to do is click on these six dots up here and then we can click on the style button right here and we can just click on this image. And obviously you can upload your own images or there are a couple of websites that I really like that help you download copyright free images. The first one is pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. The second one is pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. And the third one is unsplash.com, U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H.com. But let's actually close all of these different tabs up here and we just want to search Pexels. And we can search copyright free images for our website. And when we find something that we like, we can just click on the download button. And that will download the image to your computer. And then I'm going to drag it to my desktop so I can find it easily. And then we're all done with this tab so we can just close it right here. And now I could go back to my website and press select files, find that on my desktop and press open. That's going to upload it to our website. And once it's uploaded, we can just click on insert media. And that's looking really good, except we can't see the words that well. To change the color of the words, all we have to do is click on the word. And instead of content this time, we want to click on style. Then we can just change the text color here and we can select whatever color we want. And we can do that really quickly with any of the other text. Select it, go to style, change the text color, and now we can see it. We can also do the same thing with the buttons where we can just click on it and then go to style. Then for background type, we can click on classic. And for color, we can change the button color right here. If we want to change the text color, all we have to do is click on text color and we can change that right here also. And we can also change things like the border radius, which is how rounded the button edges are. So if we put in something like 50, it'll make it rounded like that. And we can also change the button hover color. So when you hover over this button, it should change slightly so that people know that it's a button. So we can click on hover and for background, we can do classic. And for the color, we can just make it slightly different than the other color. And we can see that subtle change right here. So that's looking pretty good. Another thing that we can do is put a background overlay on this image so that we can see the text even better. So we can just click on the six dots right here and then go to style and go to background overlay. And we can choose the color right here. So we'll choose a dark color and we can make it all the way black or make it a little lighter and that's looking pretty good. 
If you don't like any of those changes and you want to undo all of that, all you have to do is press Control Z if you're on a PC or Command Z if you're on a Mac, and you can go backwards in time and undo all of those things. Another cool thing that we can do is we can click, hold, and drag any section and rearrange it. So we can just click and hold these six dots right here and just drag it up, and when we see a blue line, we can let it go. And now we've moved the section to right here. We can also exit out of any section, so just press on the X, and that will delete the section. And within all of these sections, there's different columns. So we can actually click, hold, and drag and rearrange these columns also. And you can move this column over here. You can also, if you wanted to, delete any of these columns by just right-clicking and pressing delete. Of course, now you can also undo all of that, again, by pressing Control z if you're on a PC or Command-Z if you're on a Mac. The next thing that we're going to learn is going to make your website super pro, and that is the spacing. The spacing of your website is super important, and there's three different ways to control it. The first way is to click on a section, and then under layout, and under height, we have this minimum height, and this is the minimum height of this entire section, and we can change the values right here, so we can make it really big or really small. Now let's scroll down and click on this section right here. And the second way to control the spacing is this advanced right here. So the margin is the spacing on the outside of this box right here. So we have 80 pixels of space up here. And for the bottom, we have 80 pixels of space down here. If we didn't have the space, for example, if we put in zero, it would be too close and it would look crammed and your website wouldn't look professional. If we made it too much, like 190, it just wouldn't look right and it would be way too much space. So we're just going to keep that as 80. If we scroll down to the Talk to Us section and we click on the section and go to Advanced, we can see that the margin has nothing, so there's no spacing because the section above it already has 80 pixels of space, so this doesn't need any spacing. But we can see that it has padding, and it has padding of 100 and 200. So what's the difference between margin spacing and padding spacing? Margin spacing is a space on the outside. Padding is space on the inside of the section or the inside of this blue box right here. So if we change the margin to 200, we see that the spacing changed on the outside and it also added more space to the bottom right here, but the inside spacing didn't change. So if we go back to zero, we can see that it removed the spacing from the top and the bottom, but didn't affect inside of it. If we wanted to affect inside of it, we would have to change the padding. So the padding is the spacing on the inside. So we can say zero and zero, and that would look terrible because there's just not enough space. It doesn't have enough breathing room. We can undo that by pressing Control Z on a Mac or Command Z on a PC. And we can see that 100 and 200 looks much, much better. So that's the difference between margin spacing, which is spacing on the outside, and padding spacing, which is spacing on the inside of this blue box right here. Every single thing that you click on has the ability to have different spacing. So we can click on this Talk to Us, go to Advanced, and we see that it also has a margin and a padding. So if we wanted to add more space between here, we could either use margin, which would be spacing on the outside, or padding, it doesn't matter, which would be spacing on the inside to change the distance between these two texts. So in this case, it really doesn't matter what you choose. We're just gonna go with padding and we wanna change only the padding bottom. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna put in 50 and it changed for all of the values. And that's because this is linked right here. So I'm gonna go back to zero. I'm gonna unlink these values and then I'm gonna change it to 50 and that will allow us to change only the bottom value. And now that bottom value has space right here. All right, but that's ugly, so I'm gonna undo that and just keep it at zero. The third and final way to control spacing is to actually drag in a spacer. So what we can do is we can click on this Elements button to see all of the things that we can add to our website. And we have this spacer right here, so we can click, hold, and drag any spacer in between anything and we can actually change the spacing right here. You can delete the spacer if you want by right-clicking on the spacer and just pressing delete. Or you can press Control-Z or Command-Z to undo. 
And there actually is a spacer up here, so we can click on it right here, and we can change the height of this. And we can make it bigger or smaller just by moving the slider right here. Once you've made some edits to your website, you can just click on update to save all of your changes. And then you can press on this I right here in order to preview all of your changes. And we have all of our changes right here. And now we know how to use the spacing and also how to update our website. To create a new section, all you have to do is scroll down and hover over any section and press this plus button or we can scroll all the way down and press this plus button right here. And now what I like to do is I like to go to another website and get some inspiration. So I'm just gonna open up a new tab and we're gonna go to pixar.com. I really like their films. So we can go to their website and just click on short films or anything that you want. And we're gonna copy this right here. So maybe we'll copy this up here and we'll take inspiration from this right here and these sections down here. How would we recreate this? And obviously you can do this for any website and use the same technique and recreate any website that you want. So we can see this section right here it's only one column across. It's not divided into two different columns or four different columns as it is down here. So let's go ahead on our website and let's add in one column. So right here we can add in one column. So just click on it. And on that Pixar website they had a background. So let's go ahead and click on these six dots and go to style. And here we're going to add in a background. So under background type just click on classic and we're going to add an image. So just press this plus button right here. And now we can go to one of those websites like pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S dot C-O-M. And we can search for something like nature run. I don't know. And we can scroll down and we can try to find something. And let's say we really like this one. We don't want to download the large size because that will make our website a little bit slow. So just click on the image. And with this drop down right here, we can click on it. And we see that the original size is way too big and the large size is pretty good. So you usually want to go with the large or medium sizes. We're just going to click on large and press download selected files. This will make sure that your website is fast because the file size isn't that big. All right, let's go back to our website and let's just drag in that image. After we click on upload files, we can just take the image from over here or wherever it is, maybe it's on your desktop, and click hold and drag it in. Once that file has uploaded, we can go ahead and press insert media right here. And now we notice because this section is so small, we can't see it. So what we need to do is go to advanced right here. And then we're going to unlink the padding so all the values aren't the same. And we're going to add 250 pixels of space to the top and 250 pixels of space to the bottom. And that looks all right, but we still can't see the whole image right here. So what we need to do is go to style and then under size, we want to make it cover. And you usually always want to make it cover. This allows you to see the entire image without any white space around the edges. All right, so this looks much, much better. What we also can do is we can position this image and maybe we want to make the image center center. So it just shows up like that, but that didn't show up that great. So I'm just going to keep it as the default, but I just want you to know that you can position it in any way that you want. So now that we have the background image, just like on the Pixar website, we also need some text. So let's go ahead and add in some text. We can click on the elements icon right here and we can drag in a heading. So just click hold and drag to the center box right here. Now that we have that, we can align it to the center. We can put in some inspirational text or whatever you want. And now we can style it differently. So let's click on style and let's make the text color white, just like on the Pixar website. And under typography, let's make the size a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll make it something like 50 and let's make it a little bit more bold which is the weight so let's go over here and let's make that 600 or semi bold and let's make the letter spacing have a little bit more space so we can go over to letter spacing and go to something like six and that looks pretty good for the text except for we can't see it that well one of the cool things that we can do is we can click on the entire section and then if we click on style and scroll down a little bit to background overlay we can click on that and we can click on just classic and we can add a color let's add black and then we can make it darker or lighter let's make the opacity about 0.2 and now we can see that text just great. 
If we go to the Pixar website, we can see that it looks obviously different, but we took a lot of inspiration from it. But if we scroll right here, we can see that he sort of stays in the same area. And we can also achieve that on our website by going back and clicking on background. And under attachment, we can click on fixed. And now the image will sort of stay in the same area. It's a pretty cool effect, but personally, I like the regular default effect better where it just scrolls normally. So we can preview those changes real quick by clicking on this button. And I think that's looking pretty cool. I really like that. Let's continue editing our website by clicking this out. And let's say that we don't like this section right here. We want to drag it somewhere. We can just click hold and drag this entire section until we see this blue line right here and we can let it go. And now that section is above this one. So that's pretty cool and a little fancy, but what if just like on the Pixar website, we just want to add some regular text like this. Let's go ahead and copy this text. Obviously you can type in your own and let's go back to our website. What we want to do is we want to create one column because there's only one column of text and we can hover over this section and we can add a new section right here. So we're going to add a new section. We're going to click on the plus. We're just going to add in one column because there wasn't multiple columns of text. And then we're going to click on the elements right here and we're going to drag in a text editor. So this is just regular plain text. So click hold and drag until you see the blue and let it go. Now we could paste in all of that text by using the visual and pasting it in. The problem is it's going to take the formatting from this Pixar website and it's going to paste it into our website, which is not what we want. We just want the plain text. So just click on text right here and highlight everything, delete it and just paste it in there. Once we do that, we can go back to visual and then we can format it any way we want. For instance, we need to put in a paragraph right here and that's looking pretty good. All right, I think the text was a little lighter on the Pixar website, so let's go to style and let's go to text color and let's change that. So I'm gonna change that to something like that right there. And now that looks a little bit lighter and I'm gonna make the font a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go over to typography and set the size to be about, let's say 18. We could just type it in right there. And the line height was a little different. Basically the spacing between each of these lines was a little bit more on the Pixar website. So we can go to typography again, go down here and change the line height. Maybe let's do something like 35. All right, so that's looking a little bit better, but if we open it up like this, we can see that our text goes all the way across the screen, which is kind of hard to read. It would be better if it just went here to here. Like we can see on the Pixar website, it's a little more narrow between here and here. It doesn't go all the way across the screen and there's padding up here, padding over here and padding over here. So we can easily add that by going to our website. Let's click this out again. Let's click on the entire section and there are multiple ways to do this, but the easiest way is just to go to this width and let's put it at about 960. We just type that in right there. And now we can see that it doesn't go all the way across. There's a little padding on here and here, but not enough padding at the top. So let's fix that. Again, we can click on the entire section and then go to advanced. And then we're gonna unlink all of these padding values cause we only want padding on the top right now. And I'm gonna put in 125. And there you go, our text is looking much better and it sort of has enough space all around. And that's why I wanted to show you spacing because spacing is super, super important. The next thing that we're gonna do is go back to the Pixar website and we see this little line right here. We can even do that super easily. So let's go back here. Let's add another section. So let's open this up and hover over this, go to plus and plus. It's just one column, so we'll just put in one column. And we're going to click on the elements right here. And we're going to click, hold, and drag in this divider. Now this is a bit too big, so what we can do is we can go over to width. And we can shrink that down. Maybe we'll shrink it down to about 15%. And we'll make the alignment in the center. You can add cool things like stars to the middle of it, or different icons, or even put in some text in the middle of it. But we're just going to go to style, and we're going to make it a bit lighter. So we're going to click on the color, and we're going to drag in some color that we like. All right, that looks pretty good to me. We can click off of that. And now we can go back to the Pixar website and see that we have something that looks like this and this and this. What about these? We can easily do that also. Maybe these are your different projects or something and they go to different pages or you just wanna have some sort of gallery to show all of your stuff. Super easy to do also, but we have to notice that this is one column, this is one column, this is one column, but this is four columns. One, two, three, four. There's four different places that we can put in 
and things right here. So if we go back to our website and we add in a new section by hovering over and pressing this plus and then pressing plus again, we don't want to select the one column. We want to select the four columns. So now we can drag in widgets to each of these right here. The first one that we're going to drag in is an image widget. So just click on the elements button and go over to image and click hold and drag and we can drag in an image right here. All right, now I'm gonna go back to Pexels and I'm gonna search for some images. So I'm just gonna search for nature and I'm gonna give it a filter because I only want ones that are vertical. So I'm gonna to go to filters and I'm gonna click and I'm gonna choose vertical. Now I can see all nature pictures that are vertical and I can just start downloading them. So I'm gonna download four and sometimes I can't choose which image to do. So with the magic of editing, I'm gonna speed this process up and choose four pictures. And of course, I'm gonna download them in the large or medium size format. I'm just gonna do medium because that's big enough for the four different columns. All right, I found those four images. Let's go back to our website and let's put them in. So just click on the image click choose image and we're going to upload files and we're going to upload all of those files. So just click hold and drag and do that to the rest of them. All right, now that we have all those files, we can just insert media for the first one and we're going to go to style right here and we're going to make it a certain height. So we're just going to do height and we're going to make that 365. That's going to stretch out the image a little bit. So again, we want to make it so it says cover and that will make it so it's not distorted. Now that we have all the settings for this one that we want, like cover and the height, we can go ahead and right click on it and press copy. And we can right click and paste into each of these columns. So we can just paste, paste, paste. Now it's easy to change the image for each of these. So just click on it, go to choose image, and we can select a different image and insert media. Do that again, select choose image, select the image, insert media, click on it, choose image, and select it and insert media. All right, to me, that's looking pretty good. They did on this website right here, have text at the bottom right here. That's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is click on this elements, then click hold and drag in a heading under it, and we can type in whatever we want right here. So maybe we'll just put in jungle and we can center that and then go to style and go to typography and we can make that a little bit smaller. We can make it really small or I like it at about 20. Once we have that done, again, we can just go ahead and right click copy and then right click and paste, right click and paste, right click and paste. Then we can type in different names right here. With text, you can actually double click and just start typing. So we can type in river, forest, and mountain. And if we wanted to make multiple of these sections, we don't have to recreate everything. We can just right click on this entire section and press duplicate. And now we have another one. And we can just keep on doing that. And we can change the spacing in between these to make it look a little bit better. But I like just four, so I'm just gonna exit out of there. And I wanna add a little space down here because it's a little bit too close. So I'm gonna go to this section and then go to advanced. And then I'm gonna unlink these values and I'm gonna add 125 pixels of space to the bottom. And to me, that looks way better. It has more breathing room. I can check out what this all looks like by clicking on this button. And we can see that our website is actually looking pretty cool. I really like that. And it looks a lot different than this Pixar website, but we took inspiration from one of the best companies and we really made it our own. Nobody would think that we copied it, but we definitely used some of their really cool ideas to make our own website and make it look really cool too. All right, once we've done that, we can go ahead and update our website so it saves all of those changes. And we can actually preview our changes by clicking on the eye right here. And we can just go to our main website because it's on our main website. And we can scroll down and we can see these changes right here. And that's looking really cool. We've just updated our website. We can close these tabs up here because we don't need them anymore. And we can exit out of this. Another thing that you should know about is none of your work is ever lost. We can go down here to the history and we can click on it. And we can see all of the actions we've made and all of the revisions we've made. The actions are like everything that you just did. So I can undo that margin. I can undo editing this title. I can go way up here and undo all of these things. Like I didn't do any of that or I didn't do any of that. And I could go all the way basically to the beginning and have my website just as I did at the start. Or I can travel forward in time and re-put in all of those changes 
and get them all back. So the actions are the things that you did today. The revisions are things that you've done not only today, but the bigger changes. Maybe you want to go and see what your website looked like two weeks ago. So we can click on that and we can see that this is what it looked like two weeks ago. Or we can see what it looked like just right now. And we can apply those changes anytime you want. So don't be afraid to mess around with your website because you can always go to this history right here and you can move backwards and forward in time and see all of those changes that you just made. So I'm just going to click on apply because I like the changes that I just made. And our website is looking pretty awesome. Except for one thing. What does our website look like on mobile devices like our phones? We can go down here to the responsive mode and we can click up here on our mobile device. And now we can look at our website. All right, that looks pretty good except for it's a little bit crammed right there. Like I would want it to have a little bit more breathing room. This looks like it's too big of a word kind of. If we scroll down, that looks good. And it looks good because all of the templates are already mobile optimized. But if we go down here, this adventure awaits. The adventure is too big and that doesn't look right. And maybe I wanna see the lady running or the dog. So that's not right. And if we scroll down, we can see that these images look pretty good, except for this one's not wide enough. So maybe I'll make them all 100% width. And that looks pretty good. So we have a couple of changes that we need to make, but only for the mobile website because the desktop website looks fine. So what we can do is we can click on any section and then we can go to style and then we can go to typography and we can see that we have a size here, but we not only have a size here, we have this mobile icon. And if you don't see the mobile icon, then that means it changes across the desktop, tablet and mobile versions. But if you see the mobile icon, then it only changes for the mobile site. So this isn't gonna affect how the desktop site looks. So let's put this a little bit smaller. Let's put it at 40 just for the mobile website. But on the regular website, it's gonna be 50. So we can actually click on this and we can see desktop version is actually 80. And we can go here and we can see tablet version is 60 and mobile version is 40. So that makes sense to me. It needs to be smaller because you're on a smaller screen. Now let's scroll down and see what other fixes that we can do. This isn't looking right to me, so let's go ahead and click on this. And let's go to typography. And for the mobile version right here, let's again, let's make this 40. That looks right to me. This image is not positioned right, so let's click on the entire section. And we have position right here, and we can position it center center, and maybe we see the dog or we can position it center right, and we can see the lady running, which looks great to me. All right, let's keep on going. Let's scroll down a little bit. We can click on each of these right here, and we can make the width 100, because it's not going all the way across. So let's make the width 100, and click style width 100, style width 100. And to me, that's looking much, much better. They're all the same width, which is 100%. So that's looking awesome. And that's only for the mobile versions. All right, now we can click on update and go back to our desktop or tablet version. And we can see that none of those changes affected the desktop version. The text is still big but now our mobile version is perfectly optimized for everyone's tablets and everyone's phones. Now let's go to our homepage and learn something that's gonna save us a ton of time. We can edit the about section by just clicking on it, and then we can click on edit with Elementor. And of course we can change or create anything just like we did on our homepage, but most of the time we don't actually have to do any of that work because we can use something called blocks. Let's say we wanted to add testimonials to our webpage right here. We can just scroll down and click on this S right here, and then we can click on blocks. And we can mix and match any of these and make millions and millions of different variations of websites. So if we wanted a testimonial, we can just click on it and we can import this block right here. Once it's done importing, we can just click, hold, and drag it anywhere we want. Maybe we want it right under here. And we can change this however we want. Maybe we want this to say testimonials. And of course you can click on any of this and change the content and put all of your testimonials right here. Let's say we wanted another section, we wanted an FAQ. We could just press this plus button right here, click on the S, go to blocks, and then we can actually filter it. So we can go here and go to FAQ right here. And now we have all of these different FAQ blocks to choose from. We can just choose anyone we want and we can press import block. Then we can find it on our website and just click hold and drag it anywhere we want. And we can exit out of this right here. And now we have this really cool FAQ. 
We can of course change all of the content right here by clicking on it and we can update that. Then we can preview it by clicking on this eye right here and we can just remove all of this preview stuff right here because it's actually updated and we can view our website and we see the testimonials right there and we see the FAQ right here. Of course, you can add color or change it and make it however you want. It's also already mobile friendly, so we don't have to change any of those settings. It should work perfectly right out of the box. And just using that technique right there will save you so much time and you can actually make millions and millions of different types of websites by just combining different blocks together and I think it's gonna save you so much time. So we can close this tab up here and we can can go to the services page and now I'm going to show you something that's going to save you even more time. So we can just click on edit with Elementor like we always do and of course you can edit anything just like on the home page or any other page. And if we scroll all the way down, we can again click this S right here. And instead of importing blocks, we're going to import pages. So out of all of the different templates, you can actually import any page from any template into your website and mix and match any templates together. This is super cool. What I like to do is click right here and go to free. And we can choose any template and any page on that template to import into our website. Let's just click on this Lotus Spa right here. And maybe we want to import this services page right here. We like this page more than our services page. So we can just click on it and we can click import template. All right, now this template is imported. We don't need any of this other stuff because we're going to use this template instead of the original one. So we can just X out of all of these different sections to delete them. And now we have this website right here, but maybe we don't want all the sections. Let's go down. Let's delete this section right here and let's go up. Let's delete this section and this section. And maybe because this is our services page, we can just put in services right here and it looks a little bit too crammed to me. So we're going to click on the entire section and go to advanced to add more spacing. And let's add 150 pixels of space to the top. All right, we can update that and we can preview our website by clicking on the I and we can exit out of here. And now we see we have our new services page and it looks much, much different from our original template. And of course, you can change all of this content. You can swap out all of the images just like we learned on our home page. Now that we've edited the about and services page, let's edit the contact page. So just click on contact. And then again, we can click on edit with Elementor. So you can change any of this content however you want, just like the other pages. And over here on email, we can just click on it and you'd obviously add in your email instead of this email. And you can add in your phone number or just delete this section and your address or just delete this section. And of course, you can click on any of these social media icons and add in your own social media links right here. So that's pretty much the same as everything else. We can also add in a map right here. Let's do that real quick. Let's click on this plus section and let's have a map go all the way across. So we'll add in one column and then we'll just click on the elements right here and we'll find a map widget. So just click, hold and drag the Google Maps and we can change the location to an exact address or just a city. Let's go with Malibu, California and you can change in how much it zooms in the height, but I like how it is right here. I think I want the map to go all the way across the website right now. So if we open this up, we can see that there's space here and space here. So let's make it go all the way across by clicking on the entire section right here. And then for content, let's go with full width. That will make it go mostly across, but there's still a little bit of space right here we can see. So we can open this back up and then we can click on this column right here. And then we can go to advanced and it actually has some default padding. So we're gonna make the padding zero and that's gonna make it go all the way across. Now we can see that it looks really, really cool. And with this map, you can just double click on it to zoom you can drag around you can even do satellite and I think if you're gonna add a map then that's pretty cool but what about up here we have this contact form how do we edit this we can open this back up and if we click on this contact form right here and we click on edit this selected form right here this is how we edit this form so it's a little bit different than editing with Elementor and that's because this form is a different plugin this form is WP forms and it integrates within Elementor 
the Visual Page Builder, but it's a different plugin. So to edit it, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is just hover over it, and let's say we don't want this phone number. We don't want to ask people for their phone number, so we can just click on Delete and press OK, and now the phone number is gone. If we want to add another field, we can add all of these different fields to it. Let's add in a multiple choice, so let's just click, hold, and drag a multiple choice right there, and maybe we don't like it positioned here, so we can just click, hold, and drag it all the way to the bottom, and then we can click on it to change it, and maybe we'll put in something like, how did you hear about us? So it might be good to get some marketing data, and maybe we'll put in Google, social media, or from a friend. All right, now that we have that or any of the other fields that you wanna add, we wanna make sure it's going to the right email. So we can click on settings and we can click on notifications. And if we scroll down here, this admin email is the email address that you're using for your WordPress account. If you want to go somewhere else, you'd put in another email address right here. So this send to email address is where the information is gonna get sent to. So when someone fills it out, it's gonna send to whatever email address you put in right here. Email subject line, you can change that if you want. That's just the subject line of the email. From name, this is just your website name that it's gonna say it's from. And then from email, you can just put in admin at yourwebsite.com. And this is because we're sending it from your website. And then reply to email address. When someone's filling out the form, they put in their email address. And so when it goes in your email inbox, it's gonna reply to their email address. I'll show you that in just a second. And then this all fields, this just means that all of the fields that you put in, it's gonna send you an email. All right, so let's get an example. Let's click on save and let's exit out of here. And now it's gonna update with our options. How'd you hear about us? And it's gonna delete that phone number field right there. So let's just update this and let's preview it by clicking on the I and let's exit out of here. And we can just delete all of that preview stuff right there. We don't need it. And we can see that we have our form right here. So let's enter in some information. Let's say my name is Tyler because it is. And let's say I'm at hello at tyler.com and my message is hey there maybe they heard about you from a friend and we can just click on send now so that's going to get sent and now we can open up our email by just typing it in there and we can see our new email right here we can just click on it and we can see who it's from it's from admin at our website.com we can see the visitor's email right here and the message and how'd you hear about us from a friend. And when we click reply, it's gonna to reply to their email address that they filled out. And then you can email them back and answer whatever questions they have. So that's how your form works on your website. That's how you edit it so that people can get in contact with you. So we know we can edit any of these pages, but what about adding a new page? To add a new page, all we have to do is go to the dashboard by clicking on our website name and then click on pages and we can see all of our pages right here and we can just press add new. Once we do that, we can exit out of this and we can add a title to our page. I'm just gonna name this projects. Of course, you can choose any name that you want. You can make any page that you want. And then we can click on edit with Elementor because Elementor is our visual page builder. So just click on that. And now we've created a new page, but it's blank. We could of course import any page or any block by clicking on this, but there's something else that we can do. If we open up a new tab and we go to our website, and we click on edit with Elementor. We can actually copy any section by just right clicking right here and then press copy. And then we can go back to our page that we're creating and we can right click and we can press paste. And this is gonna save us so much time. But what if we wanna copy this entire home page? It would take a bunch of time to copy each section. We can also make this page a template and that way it'll copy the entire page. You can also save any template to your website and then import it to any other WordPress website. So to save a template, we can just click on this arrow next to the update and we can press save template. And we're gonna call this template home because it's our home page, and we're gonna press save. Now we have this template right here so we can exit out of this and we can actually exit out of this page right here. Now let's delete this section right here and let's go to this folder right here and go to my templates. And now we can see this new home template and we can press insert. And then we're gonna press apply and that's gonna import that page. And now we have the entire page on our website. So we can just check that out. This is the entire home page, and this is gonna save you so much time and keep it consistent across your entire website. Maybe we don't want all of this though. So we can exit out of this and this and this and this, and maybe this too.
And maybe because this is our projects page, we can put up here our projects. And let's scroll down and maybe we have all of our projects right here. So we can just go ahead and duplicate this and we'll have all of our projects here. We can even make this a link to different pages to show our individual projects like that so that when people click on any of these right here, they can go and get more detail about that specific project. All right, that looks really cool and great, except for we have a little issue. This has a white background. This is not a transparent header like our other headers, so it doesn't look the same. If we click on publish, and we preview this, we can see this background right here. But if we go to our home page, we can see that it's actually transparent right here. To make it transparent is pretty easy. Let's exit out of here and let's preview this one more time. And then we can click on edit page up here. This is the same thing as going to the dashboard and clicking on pages. And what we can do is we can click on this A right here for Astra and go down to advanced settings and where it says transparent header we want to enable it once we do that we can exit out of here and we can press update and now we can exit out of here and click on preview to preview our projects page and we can preview it in a new tab we can see that our projects page now has that transparent header just like the home page but we have a little problem let's close this right here because we don't need it and let's go to our home page and they see the home about services and contact but they don't see the project page. So how do they look at our projects when they can't find the projects page? The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a new page to this menu up here. And to do that is super simple. All we have to do is go to the dashboard by clicking on our website name and then going to appearance and then menus. All right, let's open up a new tab and let's go to our website again, just so I can show you. It says home about services and contact. And over here, it says home about services and contact. So this menu right here corresponds with this menu up here. To change it is really easy. We can just go back here and we can see pages right here. These are all of our pages. We can view all or see the most recent and we can click on our projects page and we can add it to the menu. And what we can do is we can click, hold, and drag this projects wherever we want. I'm going to drag it right under services. So now it'll read home about services, projects, and contact. And we can press save menu. Once we do that, we can go ahead and refresh our page right here. And we can see now we have this projects right here. So it's home about services, projects, and contact. And our visitors can click on it and they can visit our projects page. We can also make a sub menu. So we can click back to our menus and we can scroll down. And instead of this projects being its own menu link, we can actually put it under about. And this would just be the same link. But if we click, hold, and drag and indent it a little bit, it'll be a sub menu under the about. So maybe you want to learn about us and then you want to learn about our projects. And then we can press save menu right here. And once that's saved, we can go back to our website and click on our logo to go home. And now we can see this about has a down arrow indicating a sub menu and our projects is under it. So basically if you have a whole bunch of links and they won't all fit, then you can start categorizing them under these different main links. Say that we don't want our projects page to be on the menu anymore. We want to delete it. We can go here and press this and we can press remove and that will remove it from our website. We can press save menu and now we can go back and we can go to our homepage and we can see that the projects doesn't exist anywhere on our menu anymore. And now we can exit out of this right here. If we wanted our projects page to be completely deleted off of our website, you'd go to pages and you delete it from there just like we learned before. Now let's go back to the front end of our website by clicking on our website name and we can see this logo right here. But what if we want to put in our own logo? That's super easy. All we have to do is click on customize and the first logo that we're going to create is going to be super simple. Just your text right here, your business name right here. But then I'll show you how to insert your own logo. To do that, we can click on header builder and we see site title and logo. And to remove this logo, just click on remove right here and remove right here. Then we can scroll down and we can press display site title. That's going to display our site title. So whatever you put in here, it's going to display right here. We can't really see it right now because this is white. So to change that and make your super simple logo, just scroll up here and customize transparent header and then press design. And where it says site title right here, we can 
make that any color that we want. So we can make that a green or a blue or a black. Let's just make it black for now. And this is the hover. So when you hover over it, it'll turn green. And it would do that if we were on the real website. And that looks pretty good. That might be good enough for you. A lot of websites just have that, but maybe you want something a little bit better or maybe you have your own logo. So let's go back and again, click on site title and logo. You can upload your logo right here or I can show you how to make one right now. So to make a logo, we're gonna open up a new website and we're gonna go to logomaker.com, that's L-O-G-O-M-A-K-R, without the E, dot C-O-M, and press enter. Once we do that, we can press start my design and we're gonna create a new design. And we can search for an icon, something like Earth maybe, or whatever your business does. And we can scroll down and try to find the right icon for us. And they have millions and millions and millions of different icons, but I think I like this one right here. And I can click hold and drag this around. Maybe I'll put it over here. Maybe I can resize it a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. Then I'll add some text maybe. And I'll go with something like simple and modern text. And I'll do something like Josephine Sands. I like that one. Then I can type in whatever your business name is right here. So we can just type in something like earth or this would be your business name and you can make it a little bit smaller here and then you can make it bigger here by resizing it maybe we'll do something like that and then we can just click off of it and click hold and drag it around maybe i'll drag it right here and maybe i'll make this a little bit bigger just a tiny bit and put this over here you can also use your arrows to make it exactly where you want it so we can just use our arrow keys and put it about there. All right, that looks pretty good to me. I don't like the colors though, so I'll highlight both of them. And maybe I'll go with, uh, let's see, something like a greenish blue and drag it down here. Maybe something like that. All right, I'm really liking that. I think that's pretty cool. And then we can click on save right here. And then what we would usually do is click on download low resolution PNG files, but there is a trick. Instead of getting the low resolution files, we can actually just click hold and drag this to our desktop. And this is under the examples where it shows you all the examples of everything that you can use your logo on, which is pretty cool. So just click hold and drag this to our desktop and that will actually give us the high resolution file right there. So that's a little secret to get the really nice high resolution resolution files. But if you want the super resolution files and you want to support Logo Maker because I think they're pretty cool, you can press download your files right here and you can purchase the super resolution files which makes all your logos based off of math. So they'll look perfect and crisp no matter how big they are, even if they're blown up on like an entire billboard. All right, so let's exit out of there and let's get that logo that we dragged to our desktop. And we can exit out of this right here and we can go to our website. And now where it says select logo, we can upload that logo that we dragged to our desktop. So we can press upload files and select files and it should be called download.png and then we can press open and we can press select and we can skip cropping because we don't want to crop it. It's already cropped. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're also going to do the retina logo by pressing select image and we're going to click on it and we're going to choose image. The retina logo is for retina displays. So this one would show up on regular displays and this one would show up on super high resolution displays. Then what we can do is we can go down and we can click off display site title. And now we can see our logo, but it's super small. So we can go here and we can put in 155. And now that to me looks super good. But if we scroll down, we can see something that's called site icon. And our site icon right now is this W logo maker site icon is a whole bunch of shapes right here. And Apple's site icon is this Apple right here. So we want our site icon just to be an icon that helps identify our site when we have these tabs open like this. So we can go back to Logo Maker and we can create our site icon by just going here and we can delete this and we can go here and we can make this icon bigger and then we can press save right here and we can use the same trick by click hold and dragging it to our desktop. But of course, do support Logo Maker if you're actually gonna use this for your logo. And then we can exit out of here and we can go to our website again and we can click on site icon and then we can select our site icon and we can upload files and select files. And we see our site icon on our desktop that we dragged and we can press open. 
and we can press select. We don't want to crop it too close because it won't look that great as an app icon. So we want to give it a little bit of space, but not too much because we want it to be as big as possible. And then we can press crop image. Once we do that, we can go ahead and click on publish and we can exit out of there. And now we can see not only our logo, but we can also see our site icon up here. And that's going to help identify our website. So I think that's pretty cool. We can exit out of these tabs right here. And the next thing that we're going to learn is how to change this header up here. We already learned how to change this logo up here and how to add a page. But how do we change the colors of these links and maybe add a button or anything else up here? All we have to do is click on customize and then click header builder. And now we see the site title and logo that corresponds with this right here. And we see this primary menu that corresponds with this right here. So we could do things like click, hold, and drag this over here or put this primary menu over here. We can also move this primary menu above or below, but I think I liked it how it was. That's usually what people do. They have the logo on the left side and the menu on the right side. So we're just gonna keep it like that. Let's say we wanted to add something, maybe wanted to add a button. So we can just press this plus right here and we can add things like search or social media, but we're gonna add a button. So just click on button. And now we can see that there's nothing in the button. So we can click on the button and we can say the text is our projects and we can link it to our projects page, which was forward slash projects. So now this link will go to ourwebsite.com forward slash projects. We don't need to put in the whole our website com we just need to put in forward slash projects and now we can click on it and we can see that it will go to our projects page we can also change the design of our button by clicking on design and we can go to background color and we can change the background color right here we can change it to whatever color that we want but I'm just gonna revert back we can also change the text color so maybe we don't want it to be white we want it to be black or we can undo that right there we can also make a border if we put in a border we need to put in a border width that will give it a border around the button right here and we can also change the font right here something kind of cool that we can do down here is with the border radius we can make this rounded so we can just increase it right here and it will make it round over there and I think that looks pretty good that's pretty cool but what if we want to change the color of these links up here that's pretty easy we can scroll up and go back and we can go down and click on transparent header right here then we can click on design and then under menu color right here we can make the text link any color that we want so we could make this any color that we want right here maybe we'll make it a white or something but we can't see that so we can make it any other color that we want and then this color is the hover color so we can click on it and we can make it any color that we want also so now we can see when we hover over it it turns that color now obviously that doesn't look that great so we're just going to revert back but this is the area to control all of the colors right here we can also change these options for your tablet and your phones if we click down here here, we can click on the mobile icon and maybe let's say our logo is a bit too small so we click on site title and logo and actually we can't really see it right here so let's hide this control and hide this builder and now let's show that control again and now we can scroll down and we can change this logo width because it has this mobile icon right here it's only going to change it for the mobile website so we can put in something like 130 and make it bigger and that looks much better for this menu icon up here we can also change that let's hide this control again and show this builder and we can do that by pressing this toggle button right here and then we can change this however we want so let's show this real quick and we can change any of these options right here we can make it outlined and we can go to design right here and we can change all of the colors and make it any color that we want. So that's super cool. We can also add a button to this menu right here. So if we wanted a button like our projects button, we could do that. So let me hide this and show this right here. And you do that by clicking on this primary menu right here. And then what we can do is we can press this plus button right here and we can add a button. So we can just press on the button. And now when we press on that menu, I know you can barely see it 
we have this R projects button right here. So we can click on the button and of course change any of the design, anything that we want. We can change any of the colors or anything like that, just like we learned before. You can also change the margin or how much spacing is on the left side or right side. And we can press unlink and we can put 60 pixels of space on the left side so that it looks more centered. Or maybe we don't like that at all and we can delete it. And if someone's using a tablet, again, we can change the size of our logo by clicking on site title and logo and then clicking on the tablet version and we can scroll down that looks a little bit too small for me and we can change it to something bigger like 150. All right, so that looks perfect on our tablet now. So let's go back to our desktop and now we can learn how to change the footer. So that was the header. We learned how to change the colors and add a button and how to make it mobile optimized. If we scroll down, we can see the footer. How do we change that? It's pretty much the same. And don't worry, this just looks smushed because we have all of these controls right here out. It won't look like that on your real website. So to change this footer right here, we can scroll all the way up and go back and then go back again. And then we can go to footer builder. And of course we can move anything around just like we did on the header. We can move this here, this here, we can switch anything that we want. I'm just going to keep it as it was normally because that's how I like it. And the first thing that we can edit right here is you're going to want to put in your copyright information. So you're going to want to put in maybe the name of your website right here. And instead of this year right here, you don't want to have to change it every single year. So what you can do is you can do left bracket current underscore year and then a right bracket and that will put in the current year. And this is what's called a short code and this will put in the current year so that you don't have to change it every single year. We can also replace this logo if we want right here. We can just click on it and we can just click on this over here and we can press delete right here on the X and then we can add media and maybe we want to add our icon. I think that'll look pretty cool and we can insert this into post. Once it's inserted, it's way too big. So what we want to do is we want to click on it and press the little pencil icon to edit it. And for size, maybe we'll do something like custom size and something like 40 by 40. I think that'll be good. And we want it to link to our homepage. So this is a little trick, but all you have to do to link to your homepage from any page is make a forward slash. Once we do that, we can click on update and that will get much smaller and we can publish that and we can exit out of there. And now we have our projects page right here. We can click on it and we can click on it from any page that we want. We can scroll all the way down and we see this little icon right here and that'll take us back to our homepage. There is one last optional step that you can do and that's logging out so that you can visit your homepage just like a visitor would view it. And we can do that by hovering over our name up here and pressing log out. Once we do that, we can delete all of this to go to our main website and we can see our website just like a visitor would see it. So congrats, we learned so much. You guys should be super proud. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm Tyler Moore. Thank you so much.